Nice. We are on. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So today uh, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, improving multimodal fusion with hierarchical mutual information optimization for multimodal sentiment analysis. Uh, in uh, multimodal sentiment uh, sentiment analysis. And the multimodal data set generally consists of three channels, uh, such as uh, voice, image, and text. So, to, to understand and mining uh, sentiment behind this data set, what we have called multimodal sentiment analysis has become what is the topic uh, because of numerous applications, uh, such as <clears throat> overall uh, product feedback from customers and uh, measuring following uh, intention from potential voters. So uh, in the uh, paper, uh, the authors uh, proposed an improved multimodal fiction approach for uh, multimodal sentiment analysis. Please, I'm going to talk about this one. Uh, my main goal is to take some advantage point from here. If they have, or if possible, then uh, later uh, I want to utilize this point, this advantage point in the uh, neuro imaging uh, multimodal data set. <laughs> So in uh, multimodal sentiment analysis, uh, basically performance of, of a model highly depends on the quality of synthesized images, but these images are generated from the upstream process, what we call the multimodal fusion, which aim to extract and combine the input unimodal raw data to produce a result uh, multimodal representation. But uh, the problem is that the existing methods are limited to lack of control in the information flow, starting from input raw data uh, to the uh, embedding features. Uh, which, uh, uh, which may uh, lose uh, losing uh, potential practical information. Uh, and uh, introducing unexpected uh, noise carried by each modality. Therefore, uh, they proposed a hybrid approach and they called the multimodal informants, uh, who is maxima uh, hierarchically maximized uh, information in uh, unimodal input pair, I mean the intermodality, uh, and also uh, maximize information between uh, fusion results and the input in, uh, unimodal to, uh, how can I say, to take the uh, tax related information uh, from, from the multimodal data set. They also uh, formulate uh, a set of computationally parametric and non parametric methods to address the intractable issue of MI bound. This is the overall architecture of this method. There are several parts uh, of this method. So, at, at first, they um, extract feature from acoustic uh, signal and the image using some feature extractor tools. So basically, they use uh, their overlap, uh, E2FA. As they told the, that uh, this, this tools are generally used to extract the features. And then after that, they import uh, them into uh, individual unit representation. Uh, then the, the model will work in uh, collaborate in two parts. Uh, 
process image maximization and interpretation level. So, so in the image part, uh, it uh, it uh, maximize or estimate uh, the image uh, at two levels, uh, like in the uh, in the in the input levels. The and also in the fusion levels. So in, in, in the in the fusion levels, uh, the they estimate the MI between the fusion results of G and, and, and the input to 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 check the tax related information and uh, and how can I say to improve the final accuracy of the uh, prediction. But you know, and, and the fusion network is the uh, general uh, uh, network of. I mean, the fusion network is a step of linear activation layer. Uh, which uh, produce the result Z and pass uh, through the uh, multi-layer pass spectrum to, uh, for prediction, for final prediction. Uh, and uh, it approximate uh, jointly, uh, uh, which is calculated previously, I mean, the, um, in, in, in several levels, in, in the previous two levels, uh, the loss function they use uh, to improve the Final prediction of this model. So now, now I am going to describe this separately. Can you go back? I have a question. Uh, yes. So there's, I, I missed the description of the, this predictor step that comes from the embeddings from the text, as well as the, so you have two predictors, you also are incorporating the embeddings yeah. from the visual and acoustic modalities and doing separate sort of pairwise predictions yes. for those. And then you do a full fusion for all three modalities. No, this is a pairwise. Uh, I'm going to describe details in the next. Yeah. OK. OK, so first, uh, in, the, in the modeling in encoding, uh, for the text, they use the bar. Uh, to encode uh, to to import the text into uh, unit individual unit representations, uh, and for the acoustic and the visual uh, data, uh, they use a two modality specific and unidirectional STM to capture temporal uh, features from this modality. After that, they estimate. MI uh, between uh, multi model input. Uh, so now I'm uh, going to describe uh, here how they estimate, um, I mean, the, how they maximize MI here. So we know that uh, upper bounding uh, MI is challenging, but it's possible when the conditional distribution P e of Y given X is known. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can build a, a, a upper bound uh, MI by, by introducing uh, variational approximation Q, Q of Y uh, to the intractable marginal distribution P of Y according to this paper. So so according to this paper, the 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 the, uh, the the approximate the conditional distribution P of Y X uh, using uh, this objective function, which we which we generally we call the rate in the uh, generative model.
So, but uh, but the set uh, in the upper bound, most of most variational lower bounds on MI do not require a direct knowledge of any conditional densities. That's why the author goes a tractable uh, lower bound for intermodality MI maximization. Uh, to initial to establish initial MI lower bound, uh, uh, they introduced uh, uh, a approximation, a variational approximation Q of Y and uh, Q of Y by, by dividing uh, and multiplying with. Uh, with By dividing and multiplying with the conditional distribution, and uh, take, by taking the negative log uh, PF terms, uh, here they introduce this first function, uh, and the MI lower one was function, uh, and where the A sub Y is the uh, differential entropy uh, they, so, so they, they optimize this that that, that first functions or the bounds uh, for two modality pairs uh, I mean they, they use the text and visual and the text and acoustic so in this pair they treat text as x and the other modality as y they do, they do so because uh, uh, they predict uh, uh, they predict uh, or they approximate uh, p of y given x distributions uh, by introducing uh, a variational uh, approximation uh, p of p of y given x so. Um, that means they have to uh, they have to train a predictor uh, for p of y x to approximate the intractable uh, distribution p uh, of y x, and uh, they use uh, text visual in, the, in two two pair, and in this case they use the text um, because the the based on the previous uh, study uh, it suggests that the prediction from higher dimensional to lower ones converges faster with higher accuracy and also that the text modality is predominant uh, which can give more tax related information through the, uh, the fusion process. So in this case, the uh, the formulate uh, Q of Y X as a multivariate Gaussian distribution uh, with two neural networks parameterized by theta one and theta two to predict the mean and the variance respectively, and the loss function is calculated by this equation, where m is the best size, and T B and uh, T A are the summing of two. Two pair modalities. <clears throat> Interesting that they don't. So you said they didn't find that doing the pairwise for the audio and visual modalities was useful. Then they do pairwise between text and audio and text and vision. So, so at least this architecture, they only do. Uh, this pairwise bounding prediction with yeah. uh, audio and text and video and text. Yeah. They don't do it with audio and video. No. Why not? So, so yeah, they give some argument that uh, the previous study, uh, uh, they just have a that the text modality is predominant. That's why uh, in this case, they, they get more tax related information and yeah. which which improve the prediction accuracy. I see. So they just okay. Yeah. 
say it's better probably have the supplement or something when they have that. Okay. So for, for the uh, for the entropy trunk, they utilize the Gaussian Mitchell model. Uh, and using the Gaussian Mitchell model, model, the views of multiple Gaussian distributions from different property classes. And here the the build of two normal distributions for each classes. I, I mean they, they use two classes for positive and negative. Uh, and uh, here uh, the mean is the mean vector, you know, and the is in the covariance co matrix and this this parameters are calculated uh, uh using this equation uh and uh and this equation is is, is for each batches and where this c represents the, the this class i mean the positive and negative class and n is the best size uh, and this support dot uh, represents the um, component wise quantification. So, uh, for the entropy, uh, entropy for multivariate, we know that for uh, the entropy of a multivariate normal distribution is given by this equation, but P is the dimensionality and uh, and it, it is the determinant of covariance matrix. So, based on the assumption that the uh, in the previous session they use the two normal distribution, so based on the assumption that these two sub distribution are this this joint, and then from this reference paper. The lower and the upper bound of the GM entropy can be defined this expression. And since we are uh, maximized in my lower bound, I mean, the estimate the MI lower bound, so uh, by taking the lower bound, the entropy composition of entropy is calculated by this equation. Yes. According to the statistical theory, uh, if we increase the best size, then uh, estimation will be, uh, error will be reduced. So, but the problem is the uh, maximum best size is restricted to the GPU capacity. <laughs> Therefore, the author suggests that uh, they use the story memory. Uh, while you see that, and, and, and every iteration, they update this memory. Uh, and then uh, estimate the entropy for acoustic and the visual signal. So the, uh, and finally, the loss function for uh, MI lower bound uh, maximization in this level is given by this equation. So, so they calculate the loss function uh, uh, in the two level, that means in the input level. So this loss function is the input levels, and the next, uh, and the next level, I mean, in the fission level, they again uh, 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 calculate the loss function to maximize uh, for information maximization. That's why uh, the they call that. Uh, they maximize they hierarchically maximize the information that means they use the the two level the in the input level and also in the fusion level. Also, there is uh, almost I have also a confusion in, in, in the fusion level, actually the fusion in the mathematics how they calculate it. So So the, uh, the, the fission network, uh, as you know, the fission network is a stack of uh, linear activation layers here. Only the uh, and the output is the Z. So in in this in this fission level, their uh, target is to estimate uh, the opposite path. I mean the from the from the output of the fusion level Z to, to compute uh, the input representation, I mean the HA, uh, HT, and HP. So in this case, they use a, is used a score function to reconstruct from XM, it is the model from 
z in this situation and here z for z is the numerator with parameter five. After that, they incorporate the score function uh, into the noise contrast peak estimation framework using these equations. And then uh, in this level, uh, the loss function is calculated by these equations. Uh, finally, this, this loss function is uh, added to the, uh, to the in, in final training to improve the prediction uh, accuracy. is the overall algorithm. Sorry, there are minor equations here. Uh, so this this algorithm is the two is consists of two stage process. In the first stage, uh, they approximate the intractable conditional distribution by introducing the international approximation. Uh, and, and then they, 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 uh, they approximate the, the distribution P of Y given X by calculating the loss function according to the equation four. And, in the second stage, uh, they estimate the MI at two levels, like in the input, uh, input level and the attrition level, by using the loss function in four, calculated from four, and also uh, calculated from nine LBA. So for, for these iterations, the output of the prediction, I mean the uh, of the fusion uh, network, uh, and and the truth value from the truth value they calculated the uh, loss function for tasks uh, using uh, M A E and then this tasks uh, and then it, then they take uh, they uh, they calculate the overall uh, loss function that, and by taking the weighted sum of the LTAS and LCPC uh, and the LBA. Well, uh, we know that the LBA uh, from the equation 14, the LBA is, uh, is uh, taken from the loss functions uh, in, in the input level and LCPC in the fusion level. And, and if that is the uh, MLP from the MLP or any the final prediction. So by combined with them, they minimize the MA. So this is the uh, overall algorithms of this proposed method. And, so, and, and, and yeah, the tail as that or the with some experiment on, on some data sets and compare with, with some baseline method and they show that uh, the performance is better than previous one. So in, in their method, uh, they apply MI lower bound at both the input level and the fusion level to maximize the MI. Uh, and they use uh, hierarchical approach to estimate the MI and also the part from the evaluation study that means uh, they eliminate some parts, some, some loss from, uh, for example, uh, in the fusion level and the, in the input level. 
sometimes they eliminate both of them and sometimes one and, and see that uh, when they uh, eliminate this one, the performance uh, is reduced uh, in compared to the in, in, in compared to taking uh, all of them. So this is uh, the presentation, I, uh, and uh, this is uh, the algorithm what they say, but uh, still have, I, I, I don't know if it really useful for our neural imaging data set or not, because uh, they, they already implemented this one, and the code already available in the GitHub, but I did not uh, see the code. So, for uh, let's say for the go uh, inside of this algorithm, I think uh, we uh, implement this one by myself and they check the results. Then maybe uh, it will be better whether it will be helpful for or not or not. if some advantage. If we take some advantage to our data set for multimodal analysis or not. They could apply just the there on this one to our yeah. data, right? Yeah. The, the use bigger models to do it. But I, I wonder, like, they have so many loss functions, and uh, yeah, they will be lost functions. Imagine it's very time. stable. Yeah, yeah, and like, how do you know which loss function is actually working at all? Yeah, already, they already, uh, what I say, analysis. I think that's just a general and general problem when people try to add multi term loss functions that are. Combined with addition, there's like there's always like some hyperparameter where you have to assume to like control yeah. the relative effect. And um, this one is just it looks like the hyperparameter is yeah, there. Okay. Um, but there's probably I mean if, there'd probably be some mathematician somewhere that would be able to combine all terms in ways that are more creative than just this sum. Um, That's what. So like at, at a grad, there are algorithms for doing that essentially. They learn the weights for each of the models. Kind of those are separate models, but uh, except for parameters. Yeah, but uh, it's a similar principle, right? Just make it a learnable parameter. Well, uh, you don't have a way to measure uh, sum is um, degenerate. In other grad, you can put a learning rate on each of the parameters. You still have your loss to measure. The loss needs to be minimized. Here, you can minimize the loss by, like, you know, minimizing one of them or something like that. Maybe, but it's like you can't uniform. Maybe you can put L2 norm on, like, I don't know, like, so they all uniformly con contain, right? Like, put an L2, <laughs> get another L2 riser on the vector of all of the norms. Yeah, so the energy is spread, right? <laughs> and they have to like be lowered together instead of one of them. Then you, you but then it's equivalent to kind of valuing each loss equally. Yeah. But you know, soft matter. But is that what we want? Or see what see what I'm saying? Like you have, like I'm I'm sort of I uh, flabbergasted by all of that. So you have six losses or five or so, like about different losses and you have different branches of the model what if the model decides to minimize the loss the overall loss to completely ignore some just ignore it doesn't matter let's we have this problem sometimes fmri is not predictive or sometimes fmri is more predictive you just go with one and you're thinking that you're doing anything multi-model but you're actually not like how do you that's that's what i'm like how do you control for that and well that's what brand uh, and uh, the suggestion is even if you have some, well, you already have two hyperparameters yeah. on top of all this, yeah. and this is unclear how to set them. Even if you have, you don't have any here, so it is free to do anything. But when you have hyperparameters, it is like you're in front of a kitchen uh, kitchen uh, stove and you see this fire goes down. You're like, up, up, up. But you need to see it goes down because it can go down. But uh, maybe you can put this, 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 and that and that into one six element vector and put an L2 uh, norm regularizer. So L2 norm regularizer, what it will do, it will make sure they're all about equally the same uh, power. 
like they have if if your value is going down the, each one has about the same value no, what, if scale is wrong? Hmm? what if some of the losses scales are wrong yeah exactly exactly but so, then yeah i can i can make them look the same but yeah. yeah yeah so it's very difficult like rogers did the uh, you know work on that pareto front multi-object optimization and things like that but, Another thing that kind of happens though is even if the scales are wrong, it's like usually like one loss term will dominate or several, but then they become stable. Eventually, there's like a point where they don't learn from that particular loss, and then like the other less effective losses become able to give signal if you like step down the learning rate. So you're learning one loss at a time effectively. Yeah, yeah. Like kind of you, you learn the most dominant, and then the other gets a chance and things like that. Yeah, they already they also explained the same same thing. The, and the some loss are reducing, and some still not in zero. Yeah, this is a big deal. I mean, this this came up a lot in image and painting because there's like six false terms in one paper. Yeah, yes. How do you deal with it? I think it, I think it just surprisingly works out because of the dumb numbers that were like, uh, the, do you learn the dominant thing first? I, I'm kind of skeptical about how much value hyperparameters are in that kind of thing. How important is this um, supervised loss mean absolute error? Do you know they've done the ablation, the last one, task? Yeah. Do you need the task? Because we usually don't have the task information. If you just exclude it in ablation, you said they've done ablation study. If you yeah. exclude supervised signal, Will it still learn sensible decompositions? Well, essentially, why would you need the, the triple model though? In that case, you'd only be doing sort of pairwise interactions between the text and the video and then the, uh, uh, the text and the audio with how they've designed the model. So you have to have uh, the predictive. Well, the, the only, the only three-way fusion that happens in here is predicting the task, right? They, that's where they have the fusion. Uh, I don't. I don't know. No, go back. Can you go back to the architecture image, Ibrahim? Yeah. I thought CPC does the three way. Oh, they do. Yeah, that's right. They do the contrast of predictive coding. I forgot about that. Yeah, CPC looks three way. Yeah. Okay. So they do have that other three way thing. Yeah. So right. drop the supervised. Yeah. 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 Um, any other questions? Any questions from online? Okay, uh, we have a uh, next talk in 10 minutes yeah. by Eloy in the next oh, room. Cool. Yeah, thank you so much, Ibrahim. I will stop the recording. If I manage to do it. <laughs> oh. Okay.